All right, everybody, welcome to BO Boys for Thursday, March 16th. F it, it's a raw feed. We're doing it live. I'm Clayton. Yeah, I'm Pat. Clayton, we have a superhero movie opening this weekend, a superhero movie from DC. So obviously that means a record-breaking opening weekend is coming. Just a surefire hit because, of course, superhero movies are guaranteed hits. And wait, I am getting something in the earpiece now, breaking report. That may not be the case any longer. Superhero mm-hmm. movie may not equal surefire hit. Clayton, could you tell our listeners what is coming out this weekend? So Shazam Fury of the Gods, which is the sequel to Shazam, Mm -hmm. is coming out this weekend. Uh, That is a movie, the original, Mm -hmm. that opened in the 50s. It opened to 56.8. And this is tracking to open at $24 million. Right. So the tracking, the latest tracking we're getting, uh, Box Office Pro has this as low as 24 million. The studio is saying it's going to go to 35. That's what Warner Brothers is saying. The original Shazam, like you said, opened over 50. I have it at 53.5, but it, it, you know, uh, 56, I think, after a longer weekend. But that movie, you would think, was well reviewed, well liked, family film, you know, a, a a fun little movie. So you figure the sequel is going to be bigger. That's usually how these things go. Mm-hmm. Creed one was big. Creed two was bigger. Creed three was biggest. Scream five, aka Five Cream, was big, and then Scream six last weekend just opened and it was bigger. That's the way these things go for. Uh, sequels usually, and usually for superhero movies as well, but it is not the case anymore based on the uh, pre-sales for the tickets, based on surveys, and based on audience interest. It does not seem like Shazam is going to be bigger. In fact, it may be half or a third as big as the first one this is are are you stunned clayton or did you did you read the tea leaves months ago that this was going to happen well i'm not stunned because i think it's been trending this movie especially we've been hearing is has no buzz no online and i mean that i think that works i mean one of the reasons it has no buzz is it is it's a family movie i think okay because this is not an event superhero movie in the way that Ant-Man Quantumania was supposed to be. Right. 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 Or even Black Adam was supposed to be. The Rock as a, be. As, a, as, a, as a superhero. Oh, my goodness. How can this how can this miss? Obviously, it did miss. Right. But, as I said, for weeks and weeks. That it but is. but this movie seems more of, like you said, family movies and family movies. I don't think there's a lot of people online that are tweeting about it, buzzing about it. So this movie is tracking low and I think it's going to open low, but one Mm -hmm. way this movie could open bigger than that 24 is that, you know, families are going to go, parents are going to take their kids. It's going to be a walk up business situation sort of thing. They're not, they're not booking way ahead of time. It's a last minute decision. Do you do we think Billy can handle this? Did mm. he did he eat his his greens? Mm. Is he you know what I mean? Was he a good boy? Was he a bad boy? Right. Or good girl, bad girl, good person, bad person, person, person. Right. So that could add some money to this tracking and right. things have been overperforming. Right. Tracking has been low recently and things have overperformed. No, that's being on the bright side. Yes. A- after saying all that, I think this thing's going to tank. I mean, the thing is, this movie making in the 40s or, again, the low 50s would be considered, quote unquote, tanking. This movie opening in the 20s or 30s is uh, 
is beyond tanking is is historical tanking in a sense because it will it will really start to lend credence to the superhero fatigue theory yeah you know shazam opening lower than the first one would have been a, a disappointment or you know or, or a, a miss this opening as low as 24 to 35 that starts to make the chatter true that the superhero movies as a genre are trending down, you know, and not that Shazam is, was ever the, one of the big IPs, but it was one of those movies that showed anything with a cape, you know, any superhero movie pretty much is going to be a hit. Yeah. And now that is no longer the case. You cannot oh. just throw a cape on a turd and expect that turd to open to, 75 80 90 million dollars any longer absolutely yeah i mean that's the thing in that and and we've we talked about this uh at, by the water cooler at, uh at the uh, offices here the mm-hmm. boy offices that this really does stem and it looks like it's gonna historically all lead back to black adam yes in the sense that that is the moment when superheroes started their decline yep and when the emperor had no clothes in a Mm -hmm. sense that things have become so mercenary and so much of this is like, let's take a Cape, throw it on somebody and see what sticks and let's just hit the numbers, go by all the numbers and hit all the numbers we have to in these superhero plots. And the, idiots this isn't me saying this but this is what the makers of the films are saying right. these dorks these geeks these nerds will right. come and see it and that's just not the case because that's not the case the people who are general audiences have no interest in these marginal characters anymore right the bloom mm. is off the rose yeah no longer can you open a movie like guardians just completely unknown characters mm-hmm. that uh, do Buffa Bobo. Now that had a lot to do with James Gunn's abilities and his dork bona fides that I right. think also brought some people to the table here. But we're seeing now Shazam is a marginal character. Yes. And people at gave best. it one shot. And now they're like, no, we don't need more of this. I mean, Black Adam, I think, tainted this Thunderbolt. I, I don't care if it's a black Thunderbolt or a red, uh, you know, if it's like a black mm. costume or a red costume. There's a taint to this now because of that association, even though it's funny. He didn't want any association with this this movie. There is an association in people's minds now that this right. is going to be similar to Black Adam. I mean, in Black Adam, Black Adam says Shazam a bunch. Yeah. Right? Uh, uh, He says Shazam. They are clearly linked. People hated the Black Adam movie. The Black Mm -hmm. Adam was a a disaster at the box office, as I said on the show, for weeks and weeks and weeks. I said Black Adam failed. And now Black Adam had the stench of Black Adam. It's like a moving cloud of bad bo has Mm -hmm. moved all the way to shazam fury the gods and engulfed it because people who saw that black adam movie still shudder from that experience Mm -hmm. and they do not want to revisit that world they don't want to chance the fact you know chance the, the the possibility that they go see the shazam fury the gods and dwayne johnson's black adam just wanders in. They don't mm-hmm. want to deal with that again. No. And uh, I think to the extent that general audiences make that connection, they're like, nope, nope. They're doing the Grandpa Simpson walking into the bar, walking out of the bar when it comes to the Shazam Black Adam universe. And as far as the super fans, or, you know, here's another thing we've talked about, and we'll, we could talk about it more on Monday when this does bomb, is there is the feeling that to younger, people the superhero genre is not cool anymore Mm -hmm. you know and historically over the timeline of human existence superheroes have not been cool they've been more popular less popular over the years they obviously were cool in the 2010s with the rise of the mcu but 
for the most part, it has not been a cool thing for young people. It's been something you do in the in the shadows. Mm-hmm. You know, you have your comic books in your locker. You sneak a peek when no one's looking, and then you go back to your day and you pretend that you don't like superhero stuff. That's oh, yeah. how it's mostly been. You hide and- your superheroes in your Sports Illustrated or your lad mags, like your Maxims and your stuffs. Right. Uh, so that people don't see that you're reading them. That was the, that people forget that history. That was the history of superheroes. Right. And so, yeah, now that they, people think that the, the honeymoon is never going to end on superheroes, that that's just not true. Right, right. And 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 this opening weekend, if, if it comes to pass and Shazam, I mean, it's to me, it's unfathomable to open in the 20s. You know, you had Suicide Squad 2021 opened in the 20s, but that was the, a because it was the, the Suicide Squad because Suicide Squad, of course, was a giant hit starring Will Smith. But that was at the height of superheroes are cool. Yeah. Um, but the 2021 The Suicide Squad opened in the 20s, but that was still pandemic box office and it had an excuse that it wasn't a true opening weekend. It was day and date on HBO and Max it was as well. Day and date HBO Max. But this Shazam movie is uh, opening in the 20s. That signals that superheroes as a genre are on the decline. Um, have you noticed any promotion? What do you think the promotion has been from Warner Brothers? You know, they've not been great with promoting their their movies recently. I mean, House Party and uh, Magic, Magic Mike's Mike. Last Dance, which were supposed to be HBO, and they put them in theaters. But Shazam is DC. It's supposed to be their, their crown jewel of movies, aside from the Harry Potter films. Their crown jewel IP. Do you think that they have done a good job so far promoting the opening weekend of Shazam Fury of the Gods? The only promotion I've seen is this trailer in front of every movie I've seen for the past few months. So I've had to sit through that. But I I haven't seen a lot of TV ads, to be honest with you. I don't watch uh-huh. a lot of you know regular TV, so I don't know if there is a a presence with this. But I, I don't see, you know, when you, when we talk about promotion, you know, uh, Paramount has pulled out all the stops for Scream 6 and, yep. and and their various properties. They're everywhere. I mean, I, there is no way I wouldn't know that Scream 6 is coming out. Right, right. And right. It's Shazam, everywhere. Fury of the Gods, we know that it's coming out because we have to know and we want to know and we love to know. And we smelled a stinker. But I think general audiences... They might not know. I mean, this doesn't feel to me like it's being promoted like a must-see event. It's more of let's just get this over with, right? Uh, for the promotional department. Also, they they know they have a stinker, so they're not going to put money behind it. That's right, what we're right. seeing here: is that having a good movie is one thing, right? If you don't promote it, it it's just not going to sell tickets. And they know they have a bad movie and they're thinking, well, why promote this? The other thing is it's not going to tie into this extended new DCU that starts with a new Superman movie that is uh, going to go in production. So I think there's an element of that, too, is like this is stale because right. it was supposed to come out several times before. This is a stale property with a star that is is not likable. And here's the thing. It has nothing to do with any of his beliefs or any of that stuff. He's just not a likable presence on screen. And something has changed since the first movie. Cause you watch that first movie and there's a likability there and you see this trailer and you're like, Oh, and Zachary I don't know Levi. what is Zachary Levi. I don't know. Chuck, Chuck himself. Yes. I don't know what has changed here, but there is something off putting about this gentleman in this movie. And I think people are just responding to that. Yes, yes. He's coming off as noxious just in the still photo posters somehow. There is something about uh, Zachary Levi where the whatever stardom he gained from the first Shazam opening above expectations has made him seem noxious in 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 the public. Mm -hmm. And he does not wear his quote unquote stardom well. And it's coming through. 
Um, yeah, I agree. I have not been seeing uh, promotion beyond the trailer for Shazam. I will uh, note one piece of promotion I caught just last night on television, oh. which is on uh, a TBS airing of, of All Elite Wrestling Dynamite. Um, there was a promoted match with the wrestler Orange Cassidy, and it was brought to you by Shazam Fury of the Gods. So okay. Warner Brothers did spring for a promotion on one of its television properties. And so the Orange Cassidy match was brought to us by Shazam Fury of the Gods. And I don't think that's, and he gave the, he gave the limp thumbs up. That's what Clayton is doing right now on the camera uh, for our YouTube subscribers. And that is the signature move of Orange Cassidy, who is of course a wrestler based on a character from Wet Hot American Summer. Mm -hmm. That is his gimmick. And therefore, I think as great as AEW is as a program, that is not great promotion because Orange Cassidy just makes you want to watch Wet Hot American Summer, does not make yes. you want to watch Shazam Fury of the Gods. So mm -hmm. I think they, though they picked a popular person to promote it, they did not pick a person who makes you want to watch Shazam. Also, it's a type of audience that I think is first in deciding that superhero movies are no longer cool. Yes. Yeah, young young men. Yes, who have moved on, who have moved on very much from Dwayne Johnson and his Black Adam. So I think that is almost a promotion that could backfire in a way because it's the type of audience that's just going to go online and talk about how Shazam sucks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I think one other thing that we should touch on in the Shazam opening weekend preview is that like you said, you, you touched on DC announced that James Gunn is going to direct a Superman movie. Mm -hmm. They had previously announced that James Gunn would be writing a Superman movie. Now James Gunn just yesterday came out and said he's going to direct that movie. And to me, that is the classic case of trying to get people talking about something positive because they know something negative is coming. And that negative uh -huh. is going to be this Fury of the Gods opening weekend. DC wants to change the subject. Because if they knew Shazam Fury of the Gods was going to be this big opening weekend, was going to make more than the first one, that's the only thing they'd want people talking about. They wouldn't want you to talk about Superman mm -hmm. when Fury of the Gods is about to do Bafa Bobo. Yeah. But they want to change the subject before this movie even opens that is yeah. that is very very telling yeah and it, it's 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 one of those things where they're leaning on their marquee stars their mm -hmm. marquee ips and these superheroes like we're not saying that a new Superman movie won't do well or a new Batman movie won't do well or a new Spider-Man movie won't do well. Right. Those are always going to do a certain level of well. Right. They may right. do a lot. They may do less than the last one, but still big. Right. Joker two is going to be gigantic. Jo exactly. Joker. I think, I think Joker's, I mean, he's one of the biggest, we've talked about this. He's one of the, one biggest, of the biggest stars next stars. to, next to Leo. Yeah. And so, those movies will continue to be big. It's the Black Adams, the Ant Men, the Shazams, right. the Marvels. Right, right. I the I, Blue Beatles. I mean, can oh. you are you okay over there at Warner Brothers? Are you there thinking, all right, Shazam, come and go, but we still got to worry about this effing Blue Beetle coming out. We got to explain who the hell this is and try to make this thing a hit. I'm there probably won't be a poster for Blue Beetle. They're not even going to spend money to print posters for this movie. Probably. I think you're going to see the thing where they just use the poster that's been out for like two years, you know, where it says coming soon. And that'll yeah. be the only poster that goes up because they're not gonna they're not gonna bring the designer in to put a different date on the poster not for this oh they're movie. gonna just tell the yeah, people Blue Beetle at the, is going to be send an email to the all the theaters and say take a sharpie and write the date mm -hmm. on it yep yep yeah i i shudder to think what this opening weekend for blue beetle is going to be in august um 
yeah, it's, it's, you know, listen, Shazam Fury of the Gods has not opened yet, yet the feeling is already, feels resigned in the air from both the fans, from both uh, the prognosticators and analysts like us, and from Warner Brothers themselves, that this is about to be a giant stinker of an opening weekend. Yeah. I mean, do we want to get into brass tacks and, and throw down a number on this? Let's do it. I mean, so like we said, tracking is there. The, I mean, the headline is 24 because that's nice and juicy and sexy because of how low it is. But right. um, it's tracking anywhere between 24 and 32. As you said earlier, the studio is saying 35. And listen, right. that's like one of those things where usually the studios try to lowball it, but they can't be How like, much lower oh, could... that's the thing. They can't go low on this one. So they're going right. to look right. foolish no matter what here. Right, right, uh, right. Warner Box Brothers Office can't Pro... say, well, it's going to open at 15 and then they try and uh, feign excitement when it opens to 22. You can't yeah. say this is going to open at 15. It's the sequel to a superhero movie. It's Shazam 2. They can't predict any lower than this. So box office pro you know, is calling. Is this going to be 65? Is this going to be open? Like, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, but are they supposed to predict this is going to open as low as Adam driver's dinosaur spaceman B movie 65? They can't predict yeah. that it's going to open that low. It's yeah. Just they're, cra- they're... It is crazy that we are sitting here and Shazam two is about to open. And we are looking at a possible opening in the 20s. How did we get here? How did superhero movies drop this precipitously? Is it all because of Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam that I said on the show for weeks and weeks was such a disaster? It was it that was that such a game changing, genre changing disaster that now Shazam Fury of the Gods? Is is something that Warner Brothers should predict at fifteen million, so that they just barely beat that expectations? How how did we get here? It is stunning. Anyway, I, well, I'm what sorry was to Dwayne, Well, no. Well, what was Dwayne Johnson's quote? That what was it about the power was going to change? It's a very famous quote for what he he said yes. when um, Black Adam opened. And people are making I think he fun said, of it. I, I think he it. said the balance of power had changed. I think he had he had talked about the balance of power changing, and he's right. And he did. Black he Adam, caught, yeah. He changed yeah. the balance of power of superhero movies forever because now Shazam. He said, he said Black Adam will be changing the hierarchy of power, and he was being specific about DC, but right. He didn't know that that is going to be more wide ranging where the hierarchy of power has been changed right. in the sense of superhero movies are not the top of the heap. They're nope. not the cock of the walk anymore. No. Nope. And yeah, I think it and we touched on it earlier when The Rock, a completely mercenary individual who comes in looking to reach this the the biggest amount of people with the broadest sort of entertainment make the most money get the most views get the most clicks right this is a guy who makes pure widgets that's what he creates if mm-hmm. it's a if it's a tequila it's a widget if it's a movie it's a widget if it's a tv show it's a widget right, right? if it's a right. football league uh-huh xfl uh, tanking uh. tankaroony it's mm-hmm. a widget, right? Mm-hmm. And people saw that. People saw that he was just trying to jump on a train and make a product, and it turned people's stomachs, and it closed yeah. people's wallets. And now yep. they're seeing these things that used to be fun and interesting and created by fellow dorks like Kevin Feige, and they're seeing that they're, oh, these are just products and we're maybe not into right. these products anymore and yeah i right, think that right. it, it, i think it stems from people seeing behind the curtain and seeing the wizard and being like mm-hmm. oh okay i don't want to be a part of this right 
Right, right. It's not the kind of wizard I'm into, you know, like no. a Lord of the Rings wizard. Um, or like a Harry Potter wizard. Right, right. But only right. Harry Potter, not not the Fantastic Beast kid. Nobody's right. into that. Right. Yeah, it's uh it's listen, this this is where we are when a, a, a Shazam sequel is about to underperform at a massive, massive level, and you could trace it back to the rock, Dwayne Johnson changing the hierarchy of power of movies. So all right, let let's do it. Let's let's give a number. Do you want to go first or or shall I? I mean, you seem raring to go. What's what's your number? Twenty three. I'm going 23. under the lowest end. I I think when a movie like this starts going into the weekend with this kind of bad buzz, it, it, it you know you you see the trends. These opening weekends for movies that do well. They rise over the course of the weekend. This is going to be one that's going to fall. I think this is starting to turn into a laughing stock, a how low can it go situation. I'm going to go 23. I'm going to go under the low end of box office pros tracking. So, you know, why not? Why not? The Zachary Levi ain't going to be able to do any last minute sales of this movie. He's not exactly got the star power that's going to pull people in the door last minute. So I think this goes under the low end of the track. And this is going to be a historic disaster. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to go 20 and I'm going to say this is a shootout between it and scream six for the top. I think we're going to see this weekend that people are going to say, could scream um, a a front loaded horror movie beat Shazam. Wow. I did not even think about the possibility that Shazam Fury of the Gods is such a disaster that it opens number two. But that is now in play. That it, is now in play. Because Scream 6, if it has a stronghold mm-hmm. and it has an actual star in Jenny Ortega, yep. right? Who continues to have interviews where she basically talks shit about Wednesday, which makes me laugh because it's a crappy Netflix show. And I wish more people were honest uh, and saying they just want to be movie stars, which is what she said. She said, I didn't want to do that show because right. I want I wanted to do movies. And I, I hope that it did not do well. Amazing. And I love that. That's I don't great. know how her people feel about that, but I love it because it is true. Movies are better than television and everybody in Hollywood knows it as right. much as they want to say that that's different right right it's a great move also on her part it's a great move on her part because netflix is just going to have to pay back up a a second money truck to keep her because she's basically saying i don't want to do this i don't want to do tv the only way they're gonna be able to keep her is just pay her an ungodly amount so very very smart on jenny ortega's part but yes it does make movie audiences like her that much more and maybe that helps the hold of the second weekend of scream six people are saying did you hear how jenny ortega crapped all over streaming and television the other day let's Mm -hmm. go see her in the movie theater absolutely so so that's my numbers i'm going i'm going 20 wow wow i thought i was gonna be staking out the low end by saying 23 and how low could it go? It went all the way to 20. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Amazing. So, all right. That said, I'm going to do a top five okay. here based on that. So I still think Shazam Fury of the Gods will open number one at 23 million because, you know, Scream 6 made 44 million last weekend. It's going to drop in the mid 50s, maybe 60, because it is a horror movie that opened number one. Yeah, And the Scream movies do drop in the second weekend, you know, other than the original Scream, of course, which was a phenomenon. It grew and grew. Um, So I think one is Fury of the Gods uh, at 23 million. Scream 6 is probably going to be closer to like 18, 19, 20 million, um, but probably like 19. Then number three, Creed 3 will be third probably in the mid teens. Uh, Then number four is going to be, I think 65 is going to be number four because it made 12 million. And I think that 
it'll drop big, but I don't think it's going to fall off a cliff and do like 80%. So I think 65 mm-hmm. is number four. And then number five is going to be, huh? You know what? I'm going here. I'm going to go down the list a little bit longer because we still have some big movies. I'm going to go number five is Champions. I think that really the Woody Harrelson uh, fairly starrer is going to hold really well and be number five. Then number six, I think, is Cocaine Bear. Then number seven is Jesus Revolution. I think Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is going to fall all the way from four down to number eight. I mean, I am looking at a just complete massacre of the capes this weekend, a complete massacre of the superhero genre. Because I think, uh, obviously, Shazam's going to open low. And then I think Ant-Man and Quantumadia is going to fall behind Cocaine Bear, Champions, and Jesus himself in Jesus Revolution. So a wow. slaughter of the superheroes. That's that's B.O. Boy Pat's headline for the weekend. Now, so with saying my shootout at the top of the box office, I do think that Shazam is going to win out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's going to be closer than anybody wants. I also think Creed three is nipping at both of their heels. So there's a possibility that Creed three makes more money than scream six this weekend. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a possibility too. I mean, I think the top three are, could be a jumble. So I will I, I, just to be fun, just to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to go. I'm going to go scream number one again. Wow. Shazam number two with 20. And the thing is, is that Shazam would have to go lower than 20, honestly, for this to happen, because I do think that scream is going to make, like you said, I mean, it could make 19, 17, you know, right. Something like that in anywhere in between there. Uh, Then Shazam, then Creed three. Then 65, and I think Cocaine Bear is c- continuing to be strong. Mm-hmm. So that's my top five. I'm having a little bit of fun. Listen, if it happens, it'd be amazing. But it, the, the probability is kind of low, but I'm trying to uh, to uh, make things happen that I want to happen. So okay. positive visualization here. Right, right. Very, very interesting weekend. And at the box office, uh, agree. Shazam's goose is cooked, and I cannot wait until our episode on Monday, where we get the numbers in front of us, we get the demos in front of us, and we get to uh, just beat the shazit out of Shazam on Monday. Yeah. And, 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 and here's the positive thing: here is like we do not root for failure at the box no, office. No. Our no. personal opinions on the product do not weigh in on our expectations other than, you know, if we think something is going to not have good quality, if people right. don't want to see the star, things like that. Those, But like right now, the box office is healthy enough to withstand a failure like this. Exactly. Exactly. Right? A couple months ago last year, if Shazam would do this business, it would be head for Z Hills. It would right. be. Let's we're closing down theaters right. now. We're healthy enough to be able to deal with a probably bad movie doing terrible business because right. what it is is just a market indicator that is helpful now, right? Right, right. And you know what? And then the week after that, you got John Wick chapter four, which coming is out, make and it's so gonna... much, so much money. Yeah, that that fury of the gods failing does not matter at all. So it's a good place to be for the BO. You want to be able to withstand, you know, uh, a, a sickness, get it out of your system, and then move on. And that is seems to be where the BO is right now. So Clayton, well, because I the think... issue. Okay, sorry, I'm just sorry. The issue would have been back a couple months ago. It's like Shazam comes out and then nothing big comes out for another three weeks and everybody's still dealing with the stench. Right. 
the cloud of stench from Shazam will be out of the theater by the time John Wick 4 comes because people will not be thinking about this movie at all. They'll be thinking about John Wick. Yep. So, Clayton, I think we've done it. We have um, done it. So email us, of course, at the B-O-Boys podcast at gmail.com. We love getting your emails, love reading your uh, boots on the ground reporting. So if anyone does go to see Shazam Fury of the Gods, I'm not holding my breath on emails about that one. But if you do, if you're one of the few, the proud, I guess, who goes to see Shazam Fury of the Gods, email us proud. at the B-O-Boys podcast at gmail.com. Follow us on social media at the B-O-Boys pod on Twitter. Want to be O intern Christopher is killing it on there with the clips and the tweets and the promotion. So be part of that on Twitter. Of course, follow us, subscribe, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button on YouTube. We are YouTubers now. So look up the BO Boys YouTube account and watch all the episodes there. Listen to them in your head and your in your on your podcast platforms and then watch them on the big television screens at the bo boys podcast channel of course give us five stars five star reviews on apple Podcasts. those help other listeners find the show which is more important now than ever before so give us five stars on apple podcasts and clayton that is it we have done it well don't you have another podcast at least for one more week so for we just posted the final episode of the show me the money on the sports gambling podcast network starring myself and nick turner gamble 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 gambling 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 gamble 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 you gotta gamble go out and gamble 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 Gamble, 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 Gambling problem? Call 1 8 Hope and Y. That's 1 8 8 Hope and Y four six seven three six nine. Or don't. Or don't or don't. It doesn't matter. All right, Pat. I think we did it. Yes, definitely. There's nothing else to say. Except for until next time. Well, smell you at the, the box, box office. office. Nailed it. Nailed it.